Hey, my knee. I'm fine, how are you? Hi everyone, good evening. I hope everyone's having a lovely, uh, you know, holiday season. Hey Harman, hi. I'm just waiting for Dr. Kapila to join in and then we can start the session. Hi guys. Oh, thank you so much. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening, Dr. Kapila. Hi, good evening. All right, how are you doing? All good. Awesome. So guys, welcome to today's live session. Uh, today we're going to be talking about hair care and tips for a healthy scalp with, with none other than Dr. Kapila Varma. She's a dermatologist and the director at Skin Selection Bhopal. And uh, Doctor, we're super, super glad to have you on board and, you know, tell us about everything that we need to know about hair and how to take care of it. Um, are you excited for the session? Thank you so much for inviting me on the platform. And as you rightly said that it's a really important topic. And there is a lot of information available on social media nowadays, which kind of confuse everyone around. So I am equally excited to be here and talk about everything we need to know about good airs, good scalp health. And thank you so much. Awesome. Uh, so let's just get to know a little bit about you. Could you tell us about, you know, your education, your background, your upbringing? upbringing? Okay. So I am uh, born and brought up in Bhopal. That's uh, the capital of Madhya Pradesh. And following which I did my MBBS at Adi Gadi College, Ujjain, followed by which I was selected for my post-graduation MD Dermatology at a very renowned institute of central government, Trims in Pal, that is in Manipur. Following that, I came back to Bhopal, did few more cosmetology courses, trichology courses, and few fellowships uh, that is related to more of our super specialization into various aspects of dermatology. For that, I have been working with the hospital and also practicing my own at my clinic at Skin Selection. Awesome. So I want to know like, what made you take up the medical profession and why specifically dermatology? Uh, as we were in our like, you know, 10th class and plus one, plus two, that time, uh, the things were very uh, interesting when it comes to biology, that how the body is working, how science is modifying the biology. So that was something which was giving me reasoning at every point. And that made my interest towards MBBS. And luckily, and with the hard work, I could score a good rank in my PMT which helped me to go through MBBS. Now, when we are in MBBS, we are told about various subjects, starting from, as you know, medicine, surgery, gynae, pediatrics. So I was always very much interested into something which has a surgical touch in it. So there are branches which are purely medical and there are branches which has a surgery involved in it. So dermatology was one of it. With the upcoming, specifically cosmetology, there are a lot of procedures, lasers, which work very well. And it brings a change in patient's personality if you can give them a difference in their body. So 
so uh, during my internship dermatology was one of became one of my favorite and with the hard work with all the efforts we put through during our examination i could score a good rank to go for dermatology so that was the journey sounds great sounds great um so now coming to the main topic of discussion um you know hair care and what are some of the most common signs of you know um certain uh hair damage or problems with the scalp so what what are the first few things that people can take note of to you know analyze that you know there's something wrong going on with their scalp right so first thing i would like to start with that hair is again a complex structure it is not as simple as it looks from outside when we deal with various hair hair issues or when we deal with in general the patient who comes with hair problem we have to look at the scalp that is the skin over the head and we have to look at the roots at whether the roots are damaged from inside then it comes the shaft the length of the hair and also the tips so uh, these structures are kind of involved and examining each and everything help us to come to a diagnosis that where is the problem now when we talk about the root it is very similar to something which is the root of a plant so all the nourishment which a good soil should provide similarly if you are having a very nutritious food you are having a good lifestyle your hormones are checked all those things affect the health of the root and that eventually uh, leads to a good health of your hair in general okay so uh, whenever any person is dealing with hair issue they should get themselves examined like obviously very minor ones can be managed easily which we will be discussing further but you should get uh, checked by a dermatologist that it could be a some scalp disorder that is the skin issue it could be some nutritional or hormonal issues which are happening inside your body which is affecting your hair then it could be the product which are applying over the hairs maybe um, some form of chemicals or some shampoos or serums it could be even if you are using hot irons and doing hair styling repeatedly uh that could also damage the shaft of the hair so you know there are various things so a person should always try uh to go to a dermatologist with as early as possible so that the minimal damage can be controlled early once the damage is done it is going to take minimum 3 to 6 months to improve the situation because it's a very slow process okay um you you spoke about uh, you know nutrition being a part of you know nutrition sort of uh, playing a part in how your hair health is um so yeah. what to what extent is it and like how can we sort of get a balanced nutrition to ensure that our hair is good like um can you just elaborate on that point yes fine on hair is actually kind of 100% about nutrition it is a complex protein uh, if you have heard the word keratin so it's a type of protein structure and there's a complex bonding between the various proteins which leads to a hair formation so but when we come to protein uh, as a general health we need to have a good proportion of fats uh, carbohydrates micro elements mic- uh, macro elements all these things together form a hair so if a person say is undergoing some major dietary modification maybe because they are dieting for weight loss or post surgery or even if somebody had a serious illness say during the covid era there were a lot of patient who underwent a lot of stress over their body because of the covid itself the infection itself so these things kind of affect the nutrition in their body and once the nutrition defectively alters the hair health the hair starts turning into something like a green leaf starts turning into a yellow leaf in a very simple language so it kind of goes into a shedding process and such hair is bound to uh, kind of uh, go away they won't stay any longer because they are now turned into a dead face so nutrition is really important and coming to what people should look into while taking a proper diet if you are even undergoing some form of uh, dietary modification for overall health always consult a dietitian so that you don't suddenly grow into a crash diet it should be a balanced 
what minimum required in your body should not be deficient okay uh, especially proteins it's really a must thing because if proteins are not available whatever fat and carbohydrate you are taking it's not going to get metabolized now coming to what are good proteins what you can take to include in your diet uh, definitely all forms of dal are really good especially if we talk about gram lentils they are very good then uh, if you are an vegetarian you can go for egg whites if you are a vegetarian try to take white meat instead of red meat so these are the various forms the important point here is to check the amount of protein you are taking it should be minimum 1 gram per kg of your body weight minimum in your daily diet awesome i think those were some really really great tips on you know what one should include in their diet or uh, you know to get optimum uh, hair health um my next question is you know uh, we have always been accustomed to oiling our hair since our childhood and yeah. people say you know oil your hair so that they are healthy so i i really want to know is oiling good for the hair and if one is doing it how often should one oil their hair uh oiling particularly is been helpful in two ways the science behind oiling is when you do a massage while oiling your hair you kind of improves the blood circulation around the hair follicle so in that way yes it improves the health of your scalp by improving the circulation now secondly since it is a a uh, kind of nutritional uh, factor for the shaft you kind of do a conditioning over the hair shaft area so when the oil stay there for say half an hour or 2 hours maximum it gives a layering or a coating around the hair shaft so they become softer the frizziness can be reduced but uh, thinking it in a way that if you oil your hair the oil is going to go inside the root and improve the nutrition of the root in that way it's wrong it's uh, the oil is such a thick molecule that it never goes inside the hair it always stays outside only so oiling uh, i do tell my patients to do oiling once or twice a week but i tell them to do it more or so for just one hour or two hours before washing and i really don't advise them to keep it overnight especially for the people who have acne prone skin because in general if you have acne you have lot of oil production in your skin and being oil a thick structure it for the occludes the oil glands and causes increase in the acne so acne prone skin people should not do oiling for very long hours maximum 1 hour or 2 hours and secondly sometimes there are some strong oils say um, people put lot of um, different chemicals or molecules especially those ayurvedic preparations they also have a tendency of causing some allergic reaction i have seen patients who develop pigmentation especially around the hair area or using these ayurvedic preparations so it's best you go for simple oils like coconut oil or even if you want to go for something like olive oil during winters that is good, good enough do not put too many ingredients in the oil that may cause some form of allergic reaction i think those are some great tips um so for most people what kind of a hair care routine do you normally recommend and suggest you know people who don't have any serious uh, scalp problems and who have more or less a normal um, you know hair health what would you recommend for them so let's talk about three different types of hair one who get lot of oil on their scalp and becomes oily very frequently one who have a normal hair and the third who get a dry scalp or their hairs are very frizzy okay so coming to the oily type of scalp where they get like hair oil on say second day even after washing for those people they should do a regular hair washing it should not be fixed you must have heard lot of people saying that okay hair washing should be done only and only once a week or twice a week otherwise if you shampoo too frequently your hairs will get damaged it is not so if your skin is developing excessive oil your hair becomes oily very frequently there is lot of chance of getting infections or a, a moist type of dandruff very frequently so you can do more hair washing in such case you can even do it alternate days and if somebody is into heavy exercising or they sweat a lot they can even do shampooing daily 
the only thing to be noted here is the shampoo should be a mild one mild means it should be as less chemical as possible and post shampooing they should do conditioning but that conditioner should not be applied on the scalp area that should only be applied after say around 1 inch after the a uh, scalp area so that the conditioner does not stay on your scalp otherwise they will become oily again and more frequently okay now uh, coming to the second hair type that is the normal neither it becomes too oily nor it is dry in such case usually two times in a week is sufficient first thing you should do is you can use the oil massage it keep it for say 1 hour or 2 hour before washing your hair after that always use lukewarm water very hot water or very cold water the extreme temperature is not suitable for the hair it should be a normal temperature a room temperature water while washing your hair shampooing can be done in two ways there are certain scalp cleansers available which have some antifungal ingredients like ketoconazole zinc pyrethroin or nowadays even clotrimazole is available so such shampoo can be used on the scalp You give it a massage for say three to four minutes. Keep it there, wash it, and over that you can use a regular shampoo, which is sulfate free or paraben free. After washing it, a good conditioner again, not on the scalp area but on the hair length, that should be applied, kept for say ten minutes maximum, and then washed away. Third type is those who have a dry scalp, itchy scalp, or their hairs are too dry or get frizzy very easily. in such cases after applying a hair oil you can put a hot towel or a steamer so that the nutrition or the moisture can be locked inside and then you can wash your hair but it should be noted that washing the hair should again be done with a very normal temperature water if you are using a hot water especially during these cold times then frizziness will increase nowadays there is a concept of reverse shampooing if you have heard of that here we are recommending that since you already have a dry hair and it becomes frizzy after shampooing what you can do is first apply conditioner keep it for say 10 minutes or 15 minutes and then you wash it with a shampoo so whatever surfactants are present in the shampoo which is further going to reduce the moisture content of your hair will be lesser since a layer of moisturizer is already a conditioner is already applied on the shaft area such patient can also use certain forms of hair nourishing cream which are available in the market after washing the hair something like levon or other hair serums which do a anti frizz property awesome i think those were some great tips and you explained it in detail guys we'll be saving this uh, live session as a, a you know an igtv so you can go back and watch uh the video and you know take notes from uh, dr kapila's tip um now my next uh question is a very common people that a lot of people very common problem that a lot of people face which is dandruff uh we mm-hmm. see it during winters or cold seasons and some people do see it more often throughout the year so mm-hmm. uh you know we want to know what exactly causes dandruff and you know uh and when should one see a dermatologist and when is it okay to you know do self treatment and what are the treatment options available as well yeah it's really an important topic because i find every second person is having this issue and for normally people it's really difficult to understand that whether it's just dandruff or there is some scalp condition which requires proper treatment and this confusion people usually delay it and leads to a more damaged hair or a more uh, frizziness of the hair so uh, dandruff could be because of two different factors the one is the dry scalp condition that is it is becoming flaky and the second it's a type of actually fungal infection of the scalp which is basically a normal fungal element our body our skin in general has lot of bacteria and fungus which is normally present in everybody's skin but sometimes because of certain conditions or certain issues it tries to overgrow itself and then it leads to something known as seborrheic capitis or uh, further if it increases in the uh, extent it may be called as seborrheic dermatitis 
this second condition which i am telling is fungal infection that needs to be properly treated we might give you some oral medication we might need to give you certain solutions to be applied for a period of say one month or two months and then you need to manage it over a period of time but if the condition is first one that is just dry scalp here we need to nourish your scalp back better by giving you certain anti inflammatory solutions the most important point in either of the two situation is if you are facing dandruff issues try and start using some ketoconazole based or uh, laliconazole based shampoo at least once a week the principle here or the purpose here of this shampoo is not to shampoo your hair but to give you a good cleansing over the scalp so what you do is you wash uh, wet your hairs apply this shampoo on the scalp leave it for a period of 4 to 5 minutes do not wash immediately after washing it away then you can use your normal shampoo over it so try this for a period of say 3 uh, weeks or 4 weeks it should usually get under control but if it's not coming under control now it's the time that it should be checked by a dermatologist whether there is some scalp condition or some oral medication is needed point number 2 which is most important is such conditions require long term management since it's not a disease it's not a, a a condition which you know we'll give you few weeks of treatment and it will be over it's a scalp it has this tendency it might go into the same situation next year in the same season so you need to understand that uh, your doctor will always explain okay see this is the treatment this we'll follow for one month or two months and this particular shampoo you might need to continue say once a week or once in 15 days as a maintenance so try and follow that thing for a longer duration then you will never face this issue to the extent you have been dealing it previously all right that's um that's really nice to know um also i wanted to know does uh, someone having dandruff or, or you know the condition that you said the boric dermatitis can it even lead to like hair loss and hair thinning yes ultimately uh, if the condition prevails for a longer period the overall inflammation cells the ones which are causing this issue they are kind of get collected around the hair roots and once they are around the hair roots your root starts receding and then it might cause or thinning of hair and even you try to you know itch it more frequently the itching further increase the inflammatory cell activity and in this manner uh, overall scalp plus hair are going to get damaged in a long term all right uh, since we've touched base on hair thinning can you elaborate about hair thinning hair fall and alopecia or baldness in women um, you know what are the causes for it and again what are the treatment options for it okay so um you touched a very important point people usually are not able to uh, make out that whether they are undergoing hair fall or it's just hair thinning or whether it's uh, more of you know uh, some patterned hair loss or androgenetic alopecia which is happening so there are different different conditions the first one is hair thinning that is basically because your roots are not getting sufficient nutrition it could be a deficiency of protein or some form of minerals like zinc it could be some vitamin deficiency especially vitamin b12 vitamin b3 it could be because of hormonal issues especially thyroid is one of the important factor if it is not controlled if you are having chronic diabetes or chronic anemia in such condition your hair is not getting sufficient nutrition so it starts becoming thinner and finer thinning can even happen in something known as androgenetic alopecia in males it usually happens in the frontal part they start seeing that their hairline is receding or their central part is becoming empty whereas in females the middle section in the parting area starts becoming thinner and the scalp becomes more easily visible this is more of a genetic pattern of hair thinning right so uh, such patients we try to evaluate them by writing some of the uh, investigations which uh, not only evaluates their nutritional deficiency but also their hormonal issues 
and we also try to examine them by checking whether it is a genetic pattern of hair thinning in such condition once we correct the problem whether it is nutritional deficiency hormonal or the genetic issues the hair thinning can be reversed if done on a correct time so if you get your nutrition checked as early as possible and start supplementing the patient in say 3 months or 4 months time the reversal can be easily done those hair which have turned thin will become thicker eventually now coming to hair fall in these conditions itself if it is unchecked once the hair is reached into a phase where it has become uh, kind of you know almost into a telogen phase we call it telogen then it is bound to fall it's almost like a cycle of the leaf a small leaf will come it will grow become an adult leaf then after a period of time it will become yellow it will fall down and a new leaf will come so such hair which have turned into the yellow leaves they will fall down and if the body is not having sufficient nutrition new leaf will not come so eventually if the hairline was here first thinning will happen and then the hairline will start going back and this portion will remain empty at all so this is hair fall it could be Uh, a direct hair fall it could be after a period of hair thinning for 6 months or 8 months now the third thing that was alopecia there are different forms of alopecia uh, alopecia term itself means that the hair are uh, falling away it could be genetic as i already mentioned that is called as male pattern hair loss or female pattern hair loss together they are known as endogenetic alopecia there are certain autoimmune conditions also these are known as alopecia areata here uh, because of the attack of the body cell on the hair roots the loss of hair could be in the patchy form like a patch of hair loss here or there so this is known as alopecia areata this requires an intervention sometimes we need to go for certain injections also in such condition all right Okay um so I just uh, have a couple more questions left with me and I think then we can take the uh, you know uh, questions from the audience um if yes. you could just tell us a few tips um for greasy hair then people for uh, with a dry scalp you know a, a few tips to keep their scalp healthy um if you could just uh, that we see here as i mentioned it's never uh, late to start washing your hair more frequently that the greasy hair is because your scalp has a tendency of producing more oil than other people so you need not stick to just you know twice a week you may go for alternate day hair wash or even every day hair wash depending upon your oil production of your scalp because there are a lot of people who are into you know heavy gymming and they sweat a lot and that's why their hair become greasy if you keep the hair greasy overall the health of the scalp will be compromised in future so uh, as i mentioned do it the hair washing more frequently secondly use a anti fungal shampoo or what we call as scalp cleanser because since when you produce more oil the normal fungus which is known as pterosporum that is kind of start overgrowing on your scalp so you wash it with a anti fungal shampoo and uh, first you put it over your scalp and leave it on the scalp for say 4 to 5 minutes wash it away and then use your normal shampoo try not to use too much products on your hair do not put lot of spray the setting spray and all those things because they kind of uh, create a build up on your hair as well as your scalp so they become uh, more greasy if you are into styling always try and put a heat protectant spray first and then do the styling so that your hair is not damaged for those who have flaky scalp for them it's important to see that the chemicals are as minimum as possible in every manner whether it's a shampoo it should be um, should not have lot of fragrance in it should not have lot of colors in it because all these ingredients are further kind of damaging and they cause more flakiness on your scalp it should be a very basic everyday shampoo sulfate sulfate free paraben free and the ph should be towards the uh, neutral side should not be too alkaline and secondly if you are doing a conditioning try to put an oil before 2 hours of your washing of your hair so that a kind of layer is produced on your 
hair before the shampoo is done and uh, if you are still facing lot of itching on your scalp because of flakiness you should go and check yourself with a dermatologist because it could be seborrheic dermatitis or seborrheic hepatitis not just a simple dandruff right and in general as i already mentioned that hair needs to be taken care from inside out it starts from your lifestyle it starts from your nutrition your daily intake taking nuts berries all these have antioxidants it also helps especially those people who deal with lot of graying of hairs at an early age check whether you are taking sufficient amount of antioxidants or not that is important uh the oxidative stress happens because of our lifestyle it also happens because we are not taking proper nutritious food even including a lot of vitamin c and vitamin a in your body helps to uh, fight with these oxidative st- uh, species so these are also good antioxidants all right okay so my final question is uh, one quote that you live by and you know that's uh, really helped you even get through a difficult or a tough day uh always look to look up to somebody who has inspired you you will always find something or the other in their way of living or their achievements which is, will inspire you for me it's been my mother always so uh, for everybody i think there might be some relative some teacher or maybe father or mother so you always uh, should look up to somebody who has inspired you throughout your life and you will find that uh push which is keeping you down awesome okay uh, so we're just going to quickly go through um some questions that might be here so sona is asking please suggest something for corn issues and feet i know this is not a hair care uh, related question but uh, would you like to can you please down? repeat the question again one second i lost it there. yeah she's asking uh, you to suggest something for corn issues and feet okay uh again it's a confusing topic sometimes people think it is a corn but it could be some form of viral infection which we commonly know as plantar wart the both of them look very similar so first go and get it checked by a dermatologist it might be viral infection not a corn secondly always wear a footwear which is really soft in the sole because it usually happens on the pressure points the corn the weight from above because of your body weight and a hard surface from below kind of crush the skin in between and so the corn is produced in between so your sole of the footwear should be really really soft and if you are not wearing soft footwear just uh, first of all change your footwear and then there are certain preparations available which contain salicylic acid and lactic acid that can be used over the area uh, it can be available in the form of corn cap but i won't recommend corn cap directly until unless it is confirmed that whether it is a corn or it is a plant or what harshita is asking uh, can you please suggest uh, something to make my skin glow okay so it's a tough topic uh, glowy skin is just like your hair you need lot of things firstly uh, your nutrition is really important if your nutrition is not well you are already having some vitamin deficiency or iron deficiency that glow won't come even with the best and the costliest of the products so firstly check that secondly uh, go for a fixed routine and follow it regularly for a minimum of 1 to 2 months skin care or skin results are all about consistency just using it for 3 days won't change anything so a good cleanser depending upon your skin type a good moisturizer active ingredient depending upon your concern if you have pigmentation then active ingredients like mandelic acid azelaic acid if you have acne then salicylic or glycolic so accordingly an active ingredient and a sunscreen it's must so follow this thing for at least uh, a month or say 45 days to 2 months period and then you will find the change if there's lot of build up on your skin go for some form of exfoliation once a week okay uh ellen is asking how to increase the density of hair um uh, sometimes i have seen that people have a natural pattern of you know a less dense hair 
that cannot be changed with best of treatment so first thing you need to check is whether it has been there since early age like your hairs are little you know apart so if it's that's the case you can't help it but if it was not the case and you found the density was lost over a period of time go for your checkup to understand any form of vitamin d12 vitamin d3 deficiency or iron deficiency start taking those multivitamins if they are deficient then there are certain growth factors or peptides available in the form of solution that is kind of a serum which is to be applied on the scalp area two times a day they eventually improves the um what to say the uh, the growth level or the stem cell activity of your hair roots and once it is improved the new hairs also pops up plus the old hair starts becoming thicker so in a way the overall density of your scalp improves okay so we have a final question from ashwarya she's saying uh, how can i remove acne scars tough question acne scars are not easily removable to some extent Hello. Yeah, I think we lost you. Can you hear us? Yeah, now I can. Is it audible to you as well? Yes, yes it is. Okay. So as I was saying, certain products can be helpful, but they are usually helpful to an extent of say 20 to 30 percent maximum. Post that, the scars need to be treated with procedures because it's a structural change or a structural deformity. So, hundred percent scar removal is not possible with just creams or solutions. It needs more of procedure, procedure like peeling, micro needling with RF, fractional CO two lasers. So, these procedures are required. All right. Um, so, I think those are all the questions that the audience have. Um, so, doctor, mm-hmm. if people want to get in touch with you for a consultation, uh, where can they, uh, you know, reach out to you? so either they can directly dm me on my instagram handle that is dr kapila verma or they can also visit our google website that is available by the name skin selection by dr kapila verma uh, i can also put down my clinic number on which you can simply put a whatsapp message or give us a call and we can connect you accordingly awesome i think that be great and um... thank you so much for such a wonderful session um, learned a lot about hair and you know hair issues and you've been very honest about it which is you know uh, i think something that we don't see often like you know with people suggesting treatments and you've been honest about what can be treated and what can't be uh, you know worked on and uh, so thank you so much for your time and all the wonderful content that you're putting out and the wonderful work that you're doing uh, you know as a dermatologist Thank you so much. Thank you for providing such a good platform where people can learn more. And I would like to continue giving more information to everybody around. So thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much, everyone, and thanks for joining in today. Have a lovely, lovely day. Bye. Thank you.